Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 2020 Automation Summit. As a reminder, we encourage attendees to post questions during the presentation using the Q&A button found below. Let me start off by introducing myself and our speaker today. I'm David Melanie, a product manager here at SnapLogic, responsible for the platform and data solutions. I'm joined by Vishal Shah, a solutions integration and development architect at Pitney Bowes. Welcome, Vishal. Thank you. Welcome. Let me start off by introducing our platform and what we will be talking about today, and then I'll hand it off to Vishal. Like many companies, Pitney Bowes, with the help of Vishal and his team, have undergone a digital transformation, moving most of their infrastructure to the cloud. Along with moving to the cloud, they also wanted to adopt best-in-class applications that satisfy the organization's needs. Consequence of all of this is that moving to the cloud and deploying best-in-class SaaS application improves their agility, but it also quickly creates a proliferation of applications. The average organization has over 115 applications and data sources. As you can see in this diagram, SnapLogic platform allows you to unify your integration solution across every business process and can be used by a wide range of users from integration specialists to business analysts. The platform also includes features that can assist with specific use cases such as API management, as well as supporting multiple approaches to processing and loading data into your cloud data warehouse, such as ELT and ETL procedures, which we will be discussing today. Why is the approach you take for processing your data important? A recent survey we conducted found that 83% of IT decision makers are not happy with the performance of their CDW initiatives. 93% believe improvements are needed in how they collect, manage, store, and analyze data. We also found that 48% of data requires some level of preparation before it can be useful and employees spend four or more hours a week dealing with data quality issues. Before I talk about SnapLogic's ELT capabilities, I wanna hand it over to Vishal, who will discuss how Pitney Bowes has leveraged the SnapLogic platform as part of their digital transformation and address some of the pain points I've discussed in the process. Vishal. Thank you, David. So uh, as David uh, stated, uh, Pitney Bowes uh, launched his uh, digital transformation initiative in 2015. Um, and as part of that digital transformation, um, Pitney Bowes uh, decided to have all their data uh, be being collected in a cloud-based data lake and then have the curated and the uh, cleansed data brought into a cloud-based data warehouse. Um, in order to achieve that objective, um, Pitney Bowes laid out some guidelines that, that they wanted a platform which is going to perform this initiative to achieve. And some of those major uh, guidelines were, uh, one, uh, the, the platform should, be, should have an on-premise and a, a, a multi-cloud uh, facility, uh, which means that the platform should be uh, technically cloud agnostic. It should work on a um, on-premise systems uh, as well as it should work with any cloud-based SaaS applications. Um, and it should also have the ability to work on more than one cloud so that uh, it's, it's, te it's technically cloud agnostic. Um, second part is the platform should be able to process various kinds of data, whether it's um, you know, transactional data coming from an OLTP database, whether it's uh, uh, um, uh, whether it's IoT data coming from a uh, streaming service, whether it's um, uh, social media marketing data coming from uh, the social media websites and tools, uh, or whether it's um, any uh, big data analytics data coming in through uh, big data implementation. Third, which was the critical aspect of the guideline was that even though, even though it has all these cloud-based features with multi-data uh, multi facets process, it should still be um, extremely secure uh, and flexible uh, because security in today's world is critical for 
any organization to ensure that the data that they are bringing into the cloud is only uh, is completely secure and no one no one other than authorized person has access access to the data and plus the data brought in should also be uh, able to be used by different people in in a in a um, more flexible manner in terms of um, people should have the flexibility of either connecting to that data from their mobile apps or from their applications or from a console. Um, next one was the platform should have uh, appropriate workflow and access control, which would mean that you know people need to make sure that we can, the platform provides the facility where we can only provide certain data to certain uh, authorized person and we the person setting up the access control has the uh, flexibility of ensuring that which people has access to what kind of data and it should also have the ability to create a full workflow management wherein you can have a uh, data go through various stages before it is um, ultimately consumed by the um, by the destination users or application uh, another feature that we were had a, which we were looking for a platform was that along with all these uh, um, uh, heavy features the, the platform should be easy to adopt which means that it should there should be um, uh, it should be able to work from um, from the ground up pretty quickly because that's where the ROI would be achieved if we if we take a lot of time to learn the platform and try creating it, then um, uh, we would not be able to do a return on investment quickly. And then the last one, which was critical for Pitney Bowes, was that Pitney Bowes was looking for a platform that allowed, in which Pitney Bowes themselves could completely manage the platform so that at no point of time, Pitney Bowes' data is actually going out of their network. Um, so when we when we did uh, when we put in these guidelines, we we went to the market and started looking for various products and platforms that would basically check boxes on all of these features. Um, we did come across uh, multiple products doing that, but in the end, um, uh, the 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 platform that basically uh, checked all the boxes was SnapLogic, and the the. the once we adopted SnapLogic in 2015, um, and we have been using it for the past uh, five years, and what we uh, what we got after uh, adopting SnapLogic is is as follows. David, can you go to the next slide, please? This is what we got when we chose SnapLogic as a platform. So with SnapLogic, uh, we were able to have a uh, a, a single uh, place where different kinds of data can be brought together. So instead of a person um, needing marketing data to go to a, a, a marketing application or getting transaction data to go to a transaction application or getting uh, uh, IoT data to go to a streaming application, you know, people going into multiple places and getting the data on their own, we were able to centralize the data into our data lake using the SnapLogic platform. So it allowed us to basically make, uh, make the data available at a central location to allow multiple people to make use of the data. And um, uh, Pitney Bowes has brought in um, various kinds of data, whether it's enterprise data coming from its enterprise application sitting in the on-premise environment, or it's a cloud-based data coming from uh, social media sites and and um, and and its IoT streams, which are coming in through the internet-facing applications. The other thing that we were able to achieve as part of the SnapLogic platform is because all the data is now centrally located, we could now make it as a single source of truth data, which because now instead of everybody going in fetching the data on their own and doing their own set of analysis on top of the data, we were able to bring all the data into one place combine it together for the people to utilize and then make that data available. So the amount of time the person has to, um, person takes to create a, a, an aggregated data set went down from, if, from uh, weeks to, to days. And that, that, that was because all the data 
from where a system is all available at a central location. And um, because of the snap logic uh, workflow, uh, workflow management built in, we were able to basically um, secure the data in a way where uh, auth uh, certain, uh, certain kinds of people are able to access certain category of data. So like a, a marketing, uh, marketing team would be able to access marketing data, but they'll not be able to access a, 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 a transactional data. So we were able to achieve that access control pretty easily using SnapLogic. And when we first started, we brought in data on a daily basis, but uh, over the years we have um, uh, utilized advanced Snap, uh, SnapLogic feature to bring the data in near real time to get more updated uh, analysis and uh, application uh, created out of the data. So not only can we get daily data, we can actually get data in near real time using the SnapLogic code snaps. Um, uh, one of the other piece was that uh, having used SnapLogic for such a long time, we have uh, the maintenance on the product is, is near, near to zero. Most of the stuff which is uh, managing the uh, workflow and the pipeline, they are managed by SnapLogic's uh, cloud-based control plane and um, or the, the node on which the data is being processed is managed by Pinnibos themselves. So most of, the, uh, most of the upgrades and maintenance, we Pinnibos has full control on when this upgrade and maintenance occurs. So what that means is that Pinnibos can decide when and what time should we apply the maintenance and upgrade. Um, so SnapLogic uh, provides that facility where they will push the upgrade, but it, they'll give the customer the ability to apply the upgrade in their, in their own maintenance window. And that is one of the core features which, which, which made Pitnibos choose SnapLogic that it allowed, um, allowed the customer to control when, when we have to upgrade and do the maintenance. And one of the other big feature, which, which was important to us, which SnapLogic uh, did provide is the security. SnapLogic had all the major um, certification uh, available as part of the product. And um, we were able to justify the product into Pitney Bowes with those uh, security compliances, like HIPAA compliance, GDPR compliance, SOC compliance. So that made uh, that gave the comfort feeling to the Pinnibos security team that this product is uh, fully secure. It has gone through rigorous uh, compliance uh, security. So having said all these, um, the next thing I would like to show is what is our current architecture that is used in uh, PB for SnapLogic. So as I was telling you that uh, we are using SnapLogic to um, get data from uh, different sources, whether it's a uh, uh, on-premise sources, uh, like from applications like SAP HANA and SAP Oracle, um, uh, whether it's a uh, uh, SaaS-based application like say Okta or Sumo Logic, or if it's coming from a cloud-based uh, 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 applications like Salesforce, Anaplan, Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So we are able to bring the data from all of these environments into uh, via SnapLogic into our data lake, which is our Amazon S3 based data lake. Um, and um, the, 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 the part which is important here is that prior to SnapLogic, people used to connect to all of these systems individually and get the data. And then they used to do the work of aggregating or consolidating the data and, and creating some reports out of it. But with SnapLogic and our data lake implementation, we were able to bring all this data into the data lake, perform all our operations of aggregation. And then we used to send this data to a cloud-based data warehouse, which in our case is a Snowflake data warehouse, where people will then have the ability to, um, to basically um, uh, use the data to create their uh, dashboards or reports. And that same data will also be used by data scientists who can basically then take that data from all of these disparate systems and create uh, uh, create uh, uh, um, simulated models as well as uh, predicted volumes 
on various processes that we we bring we we do on the top of the data. Um, so uh, the same uh, data that uh, and then if we also just recently in the last um, uh, three to six months we also started getting data from uh, a live streaming uh, on our Kafka topic. So SnapLogic pulls the data in near real time from the Kafka topic and then pushes it into Snowflake. So that allowed us the uh, that allowed our IoT based streaming application to push the data to the topic and get it into our cloud data warehouse in, in, in near real time. Um, so what SnapLogic has um, basically done for us is it has made the movement of the data, the curation of the data, the transformation of the data, and 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 the um, and the uh, um, what do you call it centralization of the data in a, a pretty easy and uh, uh, efficient and fully secure. Um, the other thing that uh, we uh, we are currently working with SnapLogic right now is basically uh, we started doing everything in a e ETL form, um, but just recently SnapLogic introduced. A, 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 a new snap which allows you to do ELT uh, based mechanism and David will go through some of those things in, in a later slide but uh, Pitney Bowes is, 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 is evaluating the ELT uh, feature of snap logic into its uh, into its main um, data integration as we have a lot of pipelines that are currently doing ETL and we would definitely like to move that to an ELT process and take the uh, take the uh, advantage of the cloud data warehouse uh, parallel processing, which is available as part of Snowflake. Um, lastly, what I would like to show you is how Pitney Bowes has adopted SnapLogic within its own environment. So as you can see that uh, over the five year period, we have more than thousand projects that we have created across various systems, which performs uh, uh, data movement and data transformation and data aggregations for us. Uh, we have more than um, 10, more than 10 billion, 10 million pipelines execution that has happened that we generally do. Um, we have about 900 billion documents that we process in a year. And uh, as I was telling you, we are, uh, we are, uh, SnapLogic in our, in PB is, is basically doing, it, it has technique, has become a, a a de facto um, data integration platform. Um, even though Pitney Bowes has other um, data integration tools, SnapLogic has become one of the core data integration tool uh, within the company. And that is shown by the amount of users and department and business systems that have adopted SnapLogic. So we have more than 500 plus users and that number is growing by day. We have around 15 plus departments that is using SnapLogic right from marketing to finance to um, to uh, commerce services to uh, um, uh, uh, HR. We have all these uh, departments using SnapLogic and then it is connecting. SnapLogic is actually connecting to more than 25 plus business system, whether it's on premise based systems or a cloud based system, as you saw in the architecture slide. So SnapLogic as a product as a platform has been adopted very well within Pitney Bowes. And um, uh, uh, we, we, we definitely uh, as part, uh, would recommend people to, who, have, who are basically coming new to the product to definitely try out a SnapLogic platform. David? Thanks, Vishal. And looking at this slide and, and everything you've talked about, you can really see just those numbers are really impressive. 900 billion documents, um, 500 plus users. Um, you can see um, why you had those requirements for your uh, um, cloud initiative um, and uh, the story of SnapLogic becoming your, your unified um, data integration platform is, is really complete here. Uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, um, our ELT snaps that we recently released and uh, just um, ELT um, and, and these procedures um, in general a little bit. So what are ETL and ELT? They are two different approaches to uh, the general procedure of copying your data from one or more sources into a destination system 
and repurposing that data in the process. Um, the key difference between uh, ELT and ETL is the order of operations and where the transformations take place. Um, when using ETL approach, the data is extracted and um, an external source will transform the data before it is loaded into the cloud data warehouses. And ELT, what happens is, is the data is dropped into a table, extracted and dropped into a table in the cloud data warehouse where it is immediately available in its raw form. And then the transformations take place um, on the cloud data warehouse. Um, while this seems rather a small change, um, the, the differences and uh, the implications of this change are, are pretty big. Um, and here I'll talk about some of the, the pros of, of the ELT. Um, as Vishal mentioned, uh, a lot, like two things have happened that have made the cloud data warehouse and how we work with, with data change. One is everyone in a business uses data now. You used to make one report for analytics specialists and now everyone wants to consume data in some shape or form. And the other thing is, is that um, the cloud data warehouse providers like Snowflake have made it cheaper to store and process this data in the cloud. So we now have more options of how we wanna design our integrations and process this data. So key benefits of ELT is that it's faster. The data is ingested um, and dropped right into the cloud data warehouse before it's transformed. So it, it's available immediately. Um, and the transformations um, can happen simultaneously. Um, you also utilize the parallel processing capabilities of, of your cloud data warehouse, which allows you to easily scale up uh, for larger SQL queries or do these in, in parallel if you're doing multiple operations. It's also more flexible. Um, ETL forces you to essentially come up um, with every single report you wanna generate at that point in time. And if you ever change your mind about what reports you wanna generate, you probably get that data or that report from that moment forward. Versus with ELT, the data is in its raw form and you can change how it is transformed or people might even be ingesting the raw data. Um, and lastly, scalability. Um, with um, providers like Snowflake, um, your, your scalability is, uh, is limitless. Um, it just increases you know, the amount of money you have to pay to your cloud data warehouse provider. Uh, but this basically means that no matter what day of the year it is, if you have more, more data coming in than usual, you will be able to match uh, the scale using your CDW. Now, looking at SnapLogic's um, ELT solution, uh, we focused on um, a wide range of, of transformations for you to use. Um, and we've also focused on providing capabilities for the three major cloud data warehouse providers, including Snowflake, Redshift, and Azure Synapse, and Google BigQuery should be coming soon. Um, ELT Snaps come, um, allow you to visually build SQL pipelines, lever leveraging SnapLogic's ease of use capabilities. You can see here, we have developed a, <clears throat> sorry. You can see here, um, I'm using a, a number of transformations in this example. Um, I'm pulling in two tables, performing um, some transformations and joining them. Uh, what this pipeline actually does, however, is load the data into the CDW and, form, and performs the transformations uh, with the CDW using SQL. Um, when you execute the pipeline, you can see the final SQL executes um, in the CDW and a preview of it appears here. Um, furthermore, to enhance our ease of use capabilities, we've given you the option to, at each point in the pipeline, preview the SQL that is generated, as well as a, as a subset of the data. This allows you to iteratively make your pipelines and also debug any issues that might come up in the process. I encourage you to view our documentation to learn more about ELT capabilities on the platform and more changes will be coming as we continue to enhance this piece of our platform. We also encourage you to be on the summit 
um, check out the SnapLogic community and other events we're hosting, or try SnapLogic hands-on using a free trial if you don't have access already. We also encourage you to fill out our survey and we value feedback and uh, we hope to hear from you again soon. Thank you, Fishal. And thank you everyone for attending. Thank you very much.